Oui Do you hear me? Okay. So welcome uh, I am presentation about FreeBSD on new devices from FreeScale called QRE Data Path Acceleration Architecture Devices. My name is Piotr Ziemczyk. I'm working from a company called SemiHalf and as you can see we are on dark side. Okay, so uh, the presentation uh, will be first about uh, uh, the motivation behind DPIA, behind, uh, uh, behind the new architecture of network devices. And I try to briefly describe hardware, uh, focusing on uh, data path acceleration architecture. Then uh, I I'm going to tell you about the uh, process of porting uh, FreeBSD on uh, those devices. Uh, of course, uh, with uh, main focus of the port porting. At uh, the end, I show you current state and, of course, to-do list. So, uh, in my opinion, networks are too fast for now uh, because uh, it's high rate. Uh, just fast Ethernet uh, is uh, 182 kilo packets per second maximum speed. Gigabit is uh, more than a million, and this means that typical I/O buffer uh, in in card in network card will be filled in about 2.8 milliseconds. So this is maximum time uh, uh, in which hardware can uh, run without software intervention. This is quite short. And now 10 gigs links are becoming popular. So the problem is increasing. And where the problems are? First, uh, we, have, we can have either high interrupt rate, uh, rate or high latency because we either uh, have one interrupt per packet and we kill machine with interrupts. Or we have one interrupt, for example, for 1,000 packets and the packets, uh, the, the latency will be increased. The next problem uh, is about overhead of managing DMA memory for a network interface. Uh, we need to allocate buffers, we need to check if uh, card finished transmit, uh, fi finish a transmission and free the buffer. And also because there is single structure uh, for each interface, we have lock congestion uh, when uh, more than one core tries to do that. So even if we have eight or 16 cores in our system, only one core can uh, really access this data structure. And of course, we want to do something with the, the, those packets. So for example, we want to do deep packet inspection, we want to uh, process headers, we want to do, uh, do uh, routing, for example, and this uh, becoming uh, more and more problematic in software. Okay, so to deal with these problems, uh, Freescale introduced uh, a new family of communication uh, system, uh, communication sorts, uh, which are successor of the PowerQuick family, which are uh, widely known and fully supported uh, by FreeBSD. And this new family, uh, in this new family, we have uh, chips with up to eight cores, uh, 800 MC cores, up to two 10 gigs interface and uh, eight one gigs interface. So we have very, uh, very high packet, uh, packet rate inside. And uh, this, this sort also supports virtualization, not only in the cores, but uh, uh, entry sorts, interconnect, uh, are peripherals are, are also prepared for, for that, including data path acceleration architecture. Okay, so here is example of uh, uh, such system. This is uh, from middle of, we have four cores, five, in, five network interface, it one ten gigs. We have modern uh, network, uh, modern network on chip uh, interconnect. Uh, DPA, DPA region includes th these devices, 
And we have, for example, uh, uh, units which are uh, like which works like firewall inside uh, inside the SOTS controlling access uh, uh, controlling transactions between devices inside. Okay. So what is really DPAA? DPA consists of uh, various components uh, which should accelerate uh, should accelerate our network processing. So we have buffer manager uh, to uh, manage manage memory for net for networking. We have Qui manager which interconnects uh, components inside uh, inside system. So for example, we can uh, create a hardware managed QI between processor and between uh, between network interface. Uh, we have frame manager which integrates also network interface which are responsible for parsing packets and uh, routing if the, routing them to devices uh, inside SOTS. And also we have accelerators like security accelerator for IPsec and uh, pattern matter and pattern matching engine for the packet inspection. Okay, so how it works? The buffer managers, the buffer manager maintains buffers in systems. In system, the buffers are organized uh, in a set of pools uh, in in, uh, in in pools which are managed by software. So this is is software responsibility to, to keep buffers in this pool. Uh, and software must, re, uh, must react uh, on events uh, like, uh, for the, uh, like pool depletions. And everything that is for that, uh, the hardware and software can directly use buffer manager to allocate and deallocate uh, buffers. So for example, if you are rece receiving packets, the buffer manager allocates memory for us. So software is not responsible anymore for that. The Qui manager works at frame uh, level. The frame is simply a set of buffers, uh, chain of buffers plus some metadata and data, data is starting here and ends here. The, the frames are organized on, in frame quiz, which are organized in wo uh, work quiz, are organized in channels. Each channel consists eight work, uh, each with uh, with each with specified priority. So how it works? Frames are always enqueued into frame quiz, which are connected to work quiz, which are connected to channels from which uh, frames can be dequeued. Each channel is connected to a sorts component. So. Uh, for example, if we uh, are uh, enqueuing packet to QI1, the QI1 is attached to network interface number two, and we know that uh, this packet will arrive here, uh, here. And we have two times two types of channels. We have dedicated channel, which uh, are in connected to only one device, like CPU core number one, or one network interface. And we have pool channels, with, uh, with connected to group of device like all uh, CPU calls available in the system. Okay, other, man other QI manager features include uh, congestion uh, management. So if our QI is becoming too long, uh, some packets can be, can be dropped. And also uh, frame order restoration. So we can, um, we can keep order uh, of packets proce uh, processed in uh, various components of systems. So, for example, if you have if you have if we have packet one and two, and packet one goes to security accelerator, packet two goes to the processor. Regardless of finishing of uh, time of finished processing, on, on the output we, we we have processed frame in same order. Okay, the most complex element of DPAA is uh, frame manager. Uh, it uh, consists of max. Usually one frame manager have one 10 gig interface and five one gigabit, gigabit interface. So if you have sorts with two 10 gigs uh, interface, it means that there, there uh, are two frame managers. Also, it has complex DMA, which can uh, use buffer manager to allocate and free memory, 
which also can use Qui Manager to, in, uh, to exchange data to other components of the systems, and of course, classic DMA engine to put data into the memory. And for and for frame processing, we have a frame processor which includes parser, which can be used to extract data from packet. It can be even programmed to extract data from any kind of header you want, unless it's not larger than 200 bytes. Bits. The K generator is used to make decision uh, where the packet should be routed uh, in the system. Uh, the decision is based on parsed results. So, for example, we can uh, we can uh, extract VLAN uh, field and then use use it to uh, choose QI, uh, which means target device. Where should be where should packet where this packet should be uh, Test. Also, we can police uh, traffic, and if this is not enough, we can program uh, a frame processing model, which is uh, a small CPU inside. Okay, so our communication uh, between DPA and CPU uh, goes through the portal, through the portals. The portals as a new thing. Uh, it consists of uh, two set of registers. Uh, one re set of regi one register one set of registers cache inhibited and is used for configuration purposes. And the cache enabled register is transaction interface for uh, uh, for exchanging data. So if you want, for example, send frame to uh, security accelerator, we just put address in cache enabled. Uh, in cached enabled area of the portal, flush cache, wait for response spinning uh, 100 cycles, and done. Packet is in, uh, packet is in, QI, in QI. So this is very fast. Uh, also, uh, we have many software portals, so we uh, can uh, assign each portal for CPU or for task, and we don't need locking. Between uh, between portals, we only need to protect one portal, but accessing to the same to the same device through more than than uh, more than one portal is possible with without locking. And also, such uh, approach is very uh, is very efficient from uh, 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 from uh, bus usage side thoughts because. We, one transaction is really two data exchange, so uh, we can exchange 120 n bytes in uh, uh, two bus uh, in two bus transactions. Is is request and response. Okay, other features of uh, this uh, of this hardware. So the next interesting thing inside is cache stashing. Uh, it's also targeting uh, packet processing. How it works? When the packet arrives, the network device writes packet to the system memory, then notifies uh, processors. Processor uh, reads packets from system memory to parse uh, headers, and then doing something with the packet. With cache stashing, the header of the packet can be directly written to processor cache, layer level 2 cache. So the uh, processor fetching the headers no, uh, doesn't generate uh, memory transaction, which is uh, much, much faster, because system memory is much slower than cache. And we have also virtualization uh, uh, virtualizations, uh, support. Uh, in uh, core as additional privilege level, but also in interconnect as peripheral access management unit. Uh, this, contro this controls access uh, to system memory and to other components, basing on address, type of transaction, and something called logical EO, EO device number. The logical EO device number consists of two fields. One field is simply a requester, and second field can be controlled by software. So, for example, 
DPAA can set logical I/O device number to VLAN number. So we can uh, protect, uh, so we can distinguish uh, packets from different VLAN uh, the, at the uh, source interconnect level. And uh, for example, uh, uh, we, uh, for example, this can be used to uh, protect uh, uh, virtualization environment from DMA attacks. Because we have one guest using VLAN 1, we have second guest using VLAN 2, and uh, we know that uh, guest number 1 shouldn't be able to access to uh, guest number 2, mem two, two memory. We set up this in the peripheral management units, and this simply works. Okay, so that's all about uh, hardware. Uh, now we uh, talk about software, how we create SD for such devices. So first thing you has to do, we had to do it was China because of new core. We need early kernel uh, initialization because new TLB and uh, new uh, virtualization support. And they, uh, then will be really, really big uh, a big uh, point of work about uh, bringing up network. And uh, we want to support multiprocessing and there will be little troubles with uh, connecting multiprocessing with DPAA and we talk about uh, a bit more. Of course, we are also supporting other peripherals like PCI Express and also I will talk about a bit later. So, tool time. The uh, support from uh, previous version of the core was already there. Uh, so, uh, we only need to add some uh, configuration instructions, instruction in binutils, and we also need to add something reordering of generated instruction in compiler. However, all uh, patches were available on either community, uh, community or Freescale, so this wasn't too hard. The next uh, step was uh, kernel initialization in Locker. So first, what is Locker? Locker is first code executed in FreeBSD kernel. Uh, it is assembly code uh, architecture dependent, which main responsibility is to prepare environment for C execution. On, on PowerPC, Locker, uh, Locker is used to set up uh, TLB, so create mapping of kernel code, and also it creates stack for kernel, and that's it. So, uh, the new features uh, of E500MC uh, uh, require uh, required some changes in uh, Locker. So bigger TLB required, for example, uh, changing, changing of code, uh, of, co uh, of code setupping TLB, because uh, some bit fields in registers were, was bigger. The next thing that the, there is introduced new hypervisor privilege level, and this introduced also new registers to manage, the, uh, to manage TLB. And we uh, want to not break backward compatibility, compatibility of this code. So now local detects uh, text what, uh, on each core we, we are running and handles it accordingly. The same applies uh, also to hardware in the, uh, implementation dependent registers. Okay, so after that, uh, we have running uh, into C code. And uh, we also need change to, TL, uh, to PMAP area for TLB uh, size. However, this was C code and this was quite, quite easy. After that, we have running uh, running system. Console driver was already there. USB driver was already there. So we have running, running system in multi-user from USB and we want network. And because DPA is quite big, uh, 
piece of hardware and complex, we started to searching uh, code which can help us develop drivers for DPA, DPA. And we found package called Netcom Software. The Netcom Software is a packet processing framework from Freescale. Uh, which consists uh, device drivers for uh, freescale free scale devices and protocol stacks and uh, uh, some debugging and programming helpers, etc. <laughs> it is uh, OS agnostic. It can run in any operating systems, uh, uh, any operating system, and also it can run on a bare, bare metal device. And it had already all drivers we need for DPAA, so uh, it will greatly reduce our development time. However, uh, it is on proper shell license. So from this point, I would like to uh, thank you Freescale for releasing buffer manager, queue manager and frame manager drivers from this package on BSD license. <laughs> okay. So we have so uh, Netcom, SV, Netcom uh, software low-level device drivers from uh, this stuff. However, it has to be connected to our operating system. And this connection includes wrapper driver on the top and XX routines on the bottom. So XX routines uh, are very simple routines to access low-level operating systems for operating system functions like that. It's quite easy. So it's looked that there will be no problems. However, I don't know why physical to virtual address translation is required by this uh, package, which is not supported by BSD kernel and which is also ambiguous. So uh, we created solution for that. We implemented a simple approach. So we are keeping a list of all active mappings in uh, machine-dependent uh, uh, part of VM page structure, which is uh, managed by PMAP. And the XX runtimes uh, are used to use to, to, to list to extract uh, the virtual address. The physical address is translated to VM page structure. We are extracting uh, mapping list from this structure and uh, first uh, first entry is uh, the last uh, the last made uh, mapping so we have uh, actual VA okay the wrapper drivers from the top uh, are responsible for translating IPI between operating system and netcom packet software and it also they are also responsible for uh, serialization because the netcom doesn't include any locks. And we implemented that at simple new bus attachments, uh, which export on, uh, on API for devices. And this was, uh, these were enough for buffer manager and queue manager, but not from to frame manager. Because frame manager uh, is abstracted as uh, several netcom submodules which uh, uh, have to be uh, handled uh, simultaneously. Each submodules have own API and we just want single frame manager driver for that. So this the new driver, the single driver binding everything in frame manager permits initialization of common parts and also manages internal frame manager resources uh, and export one single and quite simple API to access that. So at this point we have very small drivers for every component uh, of DPAA and we uh, will try to build uh, the network interface uh, driver from that. So we created DTSEC driver, this uh, data path triple, triple speed Ethernet controller driver. From uh, operating system perspective, it's classic network, uh, network interface driver. However, 
it's not talking to any hardware, but in, instead of that, it used buffer manager, queue manager, and frame manager wrapper drivers to set up all hardware. So the all functionality is bound together to get networking. So how it works. The buffer manager is used to manage uh, uh, memory for uh, re receiving packets. The queue manager is used to in, uh, exchange uh, frames between processors and, uh, and uh, uh, network interfaces. The frame manager abstracts our uh, MAC layer. So we have file access, we have link control here. And also, it uh, configures all data flow uh, inside the frame manager. How it works? The frame from FreeBSD uh, networking stack is translated uh, to queue manager uh, frame, and then just passed into the into the hardware where is. Uh, where is held by queue manager in, in the transmission QE, from which frame manager takes this uh, takes this frame and trans transmit on the network. Uh, we can this this moment release memory to buffer manager. Uh, however, uh, uh, because the, this memory can be uh, allocated by, from, by different allocations, we are pushing the frame back to the software uh, using the transmission confirmation QE, and the software releases the releases transmitted uh, frame accordingly. On the uh, receiver side, uh, we have hardware-managed uh, buffer, uh, hardware-managed pool uh, holding buffers for new frames, uh, uh, the buffers from this pool are allocated by frame manager uh, used, used to create frame, which is put into reception QE. The uh, DTC only translates uh, uh, Q manager frame descriptor MBUF into operating system uh, frame description, pushes them uh, to the FreeBSD network stack, and when the frame will be freed, it's going uh, directly to hardware pool back. Okay, so uh, how do you think? Is this efficient? Okay, so the next thing uh, about uh, symmetric processing bring up. So it was quite easy because it's based on existing implementation for PowerQuick. However, as PowerQuick have only cores, and we have up to eight, uh, we found some issues with uh, more than two cores. Uh, what do, uh, uh, the uh, blocks uh, IPI communication. So when in system there are, there are more than two cores, uh, only first core got message, and the uh, uh, third cores are dropped. So we uh, implemented something called API multicasting uh, to avoid this problem. And now uh, all IPA messages for all code are uh, sent on, as one operation to hardware. Uh, before that, uh, it was sent sequ sequentially to core number one, number two, number three, number four, and do it to uh, uh, channel uh, occupation by first uh, by first message, the filter was dropped, and of course we faced some DPA related issues with portals. So what the issues were? The issues were. So uh, we want dedicated portal for each CPU to avoid lock congestion. We don't want locking. We want to separate data channels. So we also have uh, we also want same portal address on each CPU because we do not want to wa waste uh, kernel virtual memory. But such mapping is not supported because uh, because all device mapping copied into new cores during system startup. So uh, 
this infrastructure doesn't allow us to have pre private mapping uh, on each core. So we introduced something called sharp bit, which is implemented by uh, user-defined bits in TLB, uh, and only shard, only entries uh, marked as shard as now uh, copied into the new into new cores. So we can now uh, map portals as a private each CPU. The next problem uh, regarding portals and multiprocessing was portal configuration. We have dedicated portals on each CPU and we have to perform initialization of this portal on each CPU because from CPU number one we uh, have access to CPU number uh, to, to portal as to CPU number two. And during, but during the system boot, only boot CPU can configure own portal and because scheduler is not ready on this stage, we cannot simply change uh, the core and configure next. So the portals for, for uh, rest of the CPUs must be initialized on the map. But this may happen any time and uh, the portal configuration also includes uh, interrupt request. The interrupt request uh, might uh, sleep inside int event create functions. And, uh, for example, when this happens when so something is holding lock, there is problem. So we have to add interrupt reallocation inside XX Rotons layer uh, to grab interrupts from the system boot and then distribute it uh, when the portals are configured. The same uh, lies to portal interrupts because portal uh, the interrupts assigned to portal have to be now bound to the particular CPU. So we also have to extend the XX layer uh, to have such uh, have such uh, has such functionality. Okay, other peripherals. We are also supporting now PCI Express bus and USB controller and uh, is memory card controller and uh, more, more, more. Uh, and uh, what about current state? So this, we are supporting uh, three chip, uh, the P2041, P3041 and P5020. But the last one only in 32 mode because the cores inside uh, these chips are 64 bits. We are still we are now working on 64 bit support. And simple iProf test showed us quite uh, good bandwidth uh, to system. The CPU utilization <coughs> is very high, at about 30 percent. However, as we don't have pooling yet. Uh, almost 90% of that was interrupt servicing. Here we have uh, example how it works. Uh, the interrupt from BMAN is uh, only one, so the buffer management, uh, buffer, hardware buffer manager only once requ uh, required software intervention. And we have four interrupts assigned to four uh, portals. Each portal is assigned to a specific CPU and we can see that load, uh, uh, load is well distributed over those, uh, over two CPU. Uh, both CPU has bit, uh, bit more, bit more load if the, if the uh, first human interrupt because uh, due to error in the thoughts we have to bind uh, takes confirmation uh, takes, takes confirmation uh, QE to boot CPU. Other quiz are uh, using pool channels so any CPU can take and take pa packets from that. Okay, so what is on to-do list? So first it's uh, more network more networking features like uh, uh, pooling mode and uh, check zooming and uh, jumbo frames and also we want more peripherals like uh, pattern matching engine, 
security engine and SATA controller. The list of people which I have to say to thank you includes uh, Michal Dubiel, the only uh, I know which fully understood frame manager, uh, the Rafał Jaworowski, which is uh, the head of this project, the Phil uh, Brownfield from Scale, uh, who help us to release the net netcom code on BSD license. And also Zbigniew Bodek, Piotr Nowak, Tomasz Janowicki, Jan Sie i Łukasz Wójcik from SemiHalf, which uh, uh, tested our work and also uh, at uh, peri many peripherals uh, in support. So that's all and now we have plenty of time for questions. Yep. Soon. I don't know uh, soon. However, we are now. Next week, no. Next week, no. However, for, for we are working uh, about inclusion of this work in my line for, to my line for about three weeks now. So it's, in my opinion, it should be done in next month or, or three. So this should be expected in mine uh, in mine CP, in mine uh, FreeBSD line in about I think three months. But FreeBSD nine is stable. Don't you mean FreeBSD ten or current? I think that should be possible. Yep. Uh, what is on the market here, which is running these chips? Right. Uh, the Linux and proper shell operating systems based on Netcom package. Netcom has includes a Netcom includes a very tiny real-time operating system, uh, and uh, is very well supported by uh, tools from Freescale to. Uh, plan data flow through the thoughts. So you can simply uh, you can simply create grab. Okay, we have packet here. We want to be de de decrypted here and go out here. Code is generated. You pu push this code into device and this works. Tak. Uh, another question. Mm -hmm. um, so you asked the question to the audience whether the setup. Mm -hmm. How do you think? In the high interest rates, I'm assuming that it could be even better. Mm -hmm. Do you think that distributed proofing and buffer manager are simple enough that it could be re-implemented without wrappers, layers, and glue? The queue manager and the buffer manager are quite simple, and this should be done. This can be done easily. However, frame manager is very complex, so this involves a lot of work. However, frame manager, uh, frame manager, these layers in frame manager are not related to data path, only, only control path. So uh, here we haven't much draft back. And follow up, I guess, um, the question is that are there ways to bring that? <coughs> Could you repeat? Are there ways to bring the interrupt rate down? Interrupt down? Yes, yes. For example, pulling mode should uh, should uh, interrupt, uh, should, should lower interrupt usage. Also, uh, also, uh, we haven't implemented an interrupt throttling yet. So everything runs on default settings, and this also can be tuned. Okay. Mm -hmm. More questions? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, we are working now on 64-bit uh, on uh, the last chip, uh, on the P5020. Oh. Uh, the question I have on that is that uh, the E500 for FreeBSD is quite I don't know that yet because I'm not uh, directly related to, 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 to this work. 
I know that this is ongoing, however, I haven't any, any details. <laughs> so here you have a machine which takes, which consumes about 12, 12 watts. Okay, more questions? Yes? Um, Uh, the toolchain the toolchain changes uh, will be also pushed into the BSD current. I don't uh, know that I, this is your question. Yes. Uh, I have a friend that did external toolchains for working at one particular compiler that was known to other wise be for perhaps through other hacking methods. No, we are only we are only used uh, inter uh, compiler which is included in FreeBSD. Okay. As far as I know, no. However, I no, I can't tell you that it's really it is really true because I'm only engineer, not uh, not uh, really. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? So, thank you very much, and uh, <laughs> thank you. So, if you want uh, more details, uh, there is paper here. So, you can read paper or simply uh, catch me uh, on the hall. Thank you very much. One week. However, yeah. however, we still are using interrupt, so this can be really reduced, uh, really reduced. Yeah, but uh, where is the bottleneck? Because you're still not making one gig. Thirty percent CPU. Thirty percent CPU, uh, mostly consumed by uh, transferring packets into hardware and system. Okay. And this is our concern. We are not, uh, we are not uh, in, in works to. Uh, Transition between kernel and user space <laughs> because uh, probably you are from that map. No, 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 no. I was more looking for uh, potential bottleneck for uh, existing in, uh, in the port. Mm -hmm. Potential bottleneck, things like that. So, so, so you will okay. So, so you you, you would be limited by user round. Uh, we are also limited by user land, however, it's not, uh, uh, we are not yeah, focusing yeah. on that. Yeah, well, no, no, yeah. yeah. It would be interesting to see what netmap would be giving on the, no, on the 10 gig. Uh, it's, quite in, it's quite interesting, however, I don't know the ties in net, net, net map, netmap, because as far as I know, it uses wings. And we have no links anymore. Oh, yeah. We are simply pushing packets and nothing more. Okay, yeah. That might be challenging. It <laughs> might be challenging to see it's ready to see how can we. So, so this is why it is a bit different because a normal network doesn't have a ring on yeah. buffers. And we have no ring anymore. Yeah, yes, this was what I, what I was when during the, during, uh, during the talk. Uh, 
seems to be redoing a lot of things that are uh, originally done by software. Mm -hmm. All the ring management, things like that, are now done in hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, is it free in hardware? Or I guess there's some firmware which are which is running. Uh, the, for uh, for this uh, this sorts we uh, the, the ma uh, much often in hardware. Have only a bit of firmware which I which is based only. In Okay. Okay. So it may be quite challenging to. Uh